Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to finish up carboxylic acids today. Then remember we have class next Tuesday and we'll talk. There we're going to go through carboxylic acid derivatives, which is the next chapter. And then Wednesday we'll have questions for the exam, Friday the exam, and then Monday, Wednesday the following week. And then we're done. So there's a lot of space in between now and we're done. Okay. Okay, so last time we were talking about carboxylic acids and reactions to make them. <coughs> and so we said, okay, we can take carboxylic acid and we can turn it into a primary alcohol. We can turn it into an acid chloride. We can turn it into an ester. And we can also then turn it into an anhydride. And so these three are three of the four derivatives, carboxylic acid derivatives that we're going to talk about in the next chapter. And we can convert carboxylic acids into those. So what we're going, the, the one compound that we're missing turning this into is an amide. So that's what we're going to talk about. How do we make amides? And also, going back to the reduction, how did I go from a carboxylic acid to a primary alcohol? What reagent did I use? Lithium aluminum hydride, and it had to be lithium aluminum hydride. Now, the problem with lithium aluminum hydride is it works, but it's non it's non-specific, meaning that lithium aluminum hydride would reduce a ketone as well as an aldehyde. So starting off with that, is there a reagent that is specific for reducing just carboxylic acids? And if there wasn't, then I would say no and we'd move on, but we're not going to do that. So it turns out that BH3 THF is a reagent that is specific for carboxylic acids and it reduces them down to the primary alcohol. Okay, so it only, this only reduces carboxylic acids. So what is BH3 and THF? So BH3 is our borane that we used in hydroboration oxidation. The boron is missing an octet, and THF is a five-membered cyclic ether that has two lone pairs on the oxygen. Tetrahy it's tetrahydrofuran is its name, and remember that's furan. So when I add four hydrogens to it across the double bonds, I make tetrahydrofuran. So the tetrahydrofuran reacts, it takes its lone pair and donates it to the boron so that basically we can um, have that molecule be formed. So the THF kind of stabilizes the borane. But this is very specific just for carboxylic acids. So your book gives you a number of examples. This is just one of them. If I reacted a carboxylic acid, if I had a carboxylic acid and an aldehyde in that molecule, if I react it with the BH3 THF molecule, then it will only reduce the carboxylic acid and the aldehyde or a ketone would not be reduced. 
so it, the aldehyde would stay intact. So only the only the carboxylic acid gets reduced. If I did this with lithium aluminum hydride, the carboxylic acid would be reduced down to a primary alcohol, as would the aldehyde. So they both would be reduced. Okay, so that's a very specific that's a very specific reagent just for carboxylic acids. And while they may get into the mechanism, we're not going to. Okay. So that's another way to reduce a carboxylic acid. Okay. Um, so carboxylic acids, we can make the acid chlorides and hydrides and esters out of them. What about amides? So if I take a carboxylic acid and I reacted a primary amine with it, tell me what's going to happen in this reaction. Anthony Dedek. Um, it's just the luck of the draw, sorry. What do you think will happen? What have we been doing with what have we been doing with these carbonyl compounds? Phone a friend. Do you have one in mind? No, nobody wants to. Nobody wants to identify somebody else to, for the question. Sydney, any idea? Well, yes, that's what's going to happen because we're going to make an amid out of it. Whoa. Oh, all of these! All of a sudden, these hands go up to save you, Ariana. The nitrogen attacked the carbonyl carbon. Is that what you were going to say, Kevin? Yeah. Is that what you were going to say? No, that's actually not. You're correct. That's what we've been doing, but in this case, that's actually not what happens. So I probably should have said this is a trick. This is what you guys would call a trick question, because what you think is going to happen is not going to happen. So the nitrogen actually is not going to attack the carbonyl. Why not? Well, what kind of molecule is an amine? An acid or a base? It's a base. What kind of molecule is this? It's a carboxylic acid. So you're going to have an acid-base reaction occur, where the nitrogen is going to come over and grab the carboxylic acid proton. And so I'm going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid, and I'm going to protonate the nitrogen. So in this case, what we've been doing will not happen. Okay, and you got to remember this for next week because I will ask you this reaction again. All right, so we just get deprotonation and we make what's called an ammonium bless you, carboxylate. Now, my ultimate goal here is to make an amide. And so what happens is, is that if you make this ammonium carboxylate and now you heat this, and you've got to heat it to roughly, in the book, 
they talk about like 300 degrees Celsius. What will happen is you'll basically lose water and you'll join the carbonyl to the nitrogen to make the amide. But you've got to heat that ammonium carboxylate salt to make that happen. You can do this with any nitrogen compound that has one hydrogen. It's got to have one hydrogen. So you could do this with a secondary amine, well, with one hydrogen and two R groups. You could do it with ammonia. You can do it with any of those amines to make the amide. So in the first step of the mechanism, whenever we have an acid and a base react, we just get an acid-base reaction. All right, so that's what's going to happen in this case. We're going to heat it. We're going to basically lose water and make the amide. So you can do this. It does work. It's fairly straightforward. Um, one of my first graduate student years and years and years ago, when we had a master's program, we bought ammonia that had that was enriched in nitrogen 15, and our goal was to make an amide out of it. And so we found this reaction. We reacted the carboxylic acid with the ammonia, and then we. This is a 1913 paper or something like that. So we tried it with a, with a hot plate, and then we realized in 1913 they didn't have hot plates. All they had were Bunsen burners. So then we tried it with the Bunsen burner, and it worked fine. But you got to put some serious heat to this. Now, you may know, if you've taken biology, other ways to make amides that don't require that kind of heat. So for instance, what is this? That is an alpha amino acid. The alpha term coming from the carbon that's attached to the carbonyl is the alpha carbon. So that's an alpha amino acid. And what do alpha amino acids make? peptide bonds which are part of proteins. So how does that happen? We end up with two amino acids coming together and there are enzymes in in your systems that will react carboxylic acid with the nitrogen and so that's how we can make this short of 300 degrees Celsius. That's what you would talk about in biology. But we're going we're to cut it short here in organic chemistry and just say, yes, we would go ahead and make the amide, which would be part of the protein. So there are ways to do this short of 300 degrees. But I'll leave that for biochemistry because anybody can teach you biochemistry better than I can. We're not even going to make it through all the organic we should. So, okay. so you will see next week, I will almost guarantee you'll see this reaction to form the ammonium carboxylate, and then you will see followed by that heat to make the amide. So that's a couple of ways we can make the amides. Um, from carboxylic acids directly. If it's not biological, it's going to have to be from the salt. Although, we could do other things. Like we did on Monday. We could say, okay, 
How about I convert my carboxylic acid to a carboxylic acid chloride and then add my amine to it. Is that a way to make an amide? Sure. Much better than heating it up to 300 degrees. Only thing I have to remember is how do I go from a carboxylic acid to an acid chloride? SOCl2 or PCL3, PCL5. So any of those reagents, oh, what reagent will not work? What? Well, that one definitely will not, work, will not work, that's true. ALCL3 will not work. HCl also will not work. So if you try and put HCl here, will not work. Or we could take a carboxylic acid and we could convert it to an anhydride and then add the amine to the anhydride. Again, all I need to know is how to make the anhydride out of the carboxylic acid. Should I use? Carboxylic acid chloride. So there's other ways to convert a carboxylic acid through either one of these derivatives to make the amide. Josh? Probably pretty small. Um, you might get some. It's going to depend on the temperature. So it's going to depend. Your your argument is, if we start making this in the presence of that, maybe we get some anhydride. We might. But it's probably not going to be very much. And if we're going to do that, we're just not... So none of these reactions, we're just going to go to the lab and whip something up. It doesn't work that way. We're going to go and we're going to research who's done it before, what their procedures are, and they very well probably have optimized the procedures to get this versus that side reaction. So we could, but probably not very much. And on paper, we can say 100%. <coughs> okay, so that's how we can make the amides out of the carboxylic acid. Hard heat or turn it into a derivative and then react the derivative. Right. So that's that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna make the amide. Other reactions of carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acid plus organolithium. 
which is the equivalent of carboxylic acid plus Grignard. What do I get from that reaction? What? Right? What's the R minus going to do in this case? What? I'm having a deja vu moment from a few minutes ago. It should, the R minus should attack the carbonyl, right? But will it? No. Why not? Because I've got a carboxylic acid in the presence of a really strong base. So instead, this R minus is going to grab that carboxylic acid, proton. Okay, and I'm going to make RH, and I just killed. I just killed a lithium, or I just killed an organolithium. Okay. Now, anybody having a deja vu moment from Monday when I deprotonated the carboxylic acid with my first H minus? Apparently not. What did I do with the second equivalent of H minus? It attacked the carbonyl. So, how about I use another equivalent of Grignard? Now what's going to happen? The R minus is going to attack the carbonyl. And we'll just put a prime on the R so that they could be the same, they could be different. Okay, now, um, if we have a deja vu, deja vu moment back to Monday, we could say, oh, well, wait, there's that aluminum thing that came in and attacked to the oxygen and let the oxygen leave. No aluminum. So I'm done. So let me go ahead and add H plus H2O to this. What did I just make? It's okay, you will by next week you'll know the name. Or not. So it's a hydrate. Are hydrates stable? Are they stable in acid and water? Run of the mill hydrates? No. So what are they going to turn into? Uh oh, we're stuck. So what if it's what if this is next week on the test, and I'm stuck? Is water going to leave and that's what comes Yes. But what if I'm stuck and I don't know that? Let's react this <coughs> hydrate with acid. <coughs> so what am I going to do here? Protonate the oxygen. Which oxygen? Doesn't matter. Okay, protonate the top one. Okay, what happens next? The water could leave. <coughs> or I could do this all in one step, say, 
This pair of electrons goes to form the double bond. That pair of electrons goes to the to the water. So I'm going to lose H plus and H2O, and I make my final ketone product. Okay. So if you want to make the water leave and have a carbocation, then lose the H plus, I'm fine with that. But if you want to do it all in one step, I'm fine with that too. So I added two equivalents of Grignard to this carboxylic acid and I ended up making the ketone. So let me let me write that overall equation on the next on the next slide. So I take my carboxylic acid, I react it with two Grignards or in this case two organolithiums. I have a then H plus H2O step and I end up forming the ketone where I've added the alkyl group of the organolithium. And so there's my reaction. So this is going to begin some reactions where I'm going to do I'm going to do this reaction. I'm going to end up forming like a hydrate or an imine or something that we talked about in the last couple chapters that's unstable and then it's going to convert itself backwards. Okay, so we have to be on the lookout for that. So now I can take a carboxylic acid and I can make a ketone out of it. What else can I do with this? Well, what if I take my acid chloride and I add to that two equivalents of Grignard? What am I going to make? I will make a tertiary alcohol. Now, if you didn't see that, and it's next week on the exam, and you can't skip ahead, how do you handle that? Short of panic and crying. I can't guarantee you I'll see either one of those. Because I do remember somebody tweeted after one exam. This, she was crying and he didn't even care. I didn't even know she was crying. I probably should have, but I didn't. No, this was a post-organic tweet. that my robots found that had my name on it, so come up with a code name, not the entire name. So before we panic on this this problem, all right, what's what's the R minus gonna do? Now I know you're hesitant to say what you're gonna say, right? Because so far today that's been wrong twice. But what's the R minus gonna do? going to attack the carbonyl carbon. Yes, it's going to attack the carbonyl carbon this time because this isn't a carboxylic acid. So the R- is going to come in and attack that carbonyl and I'm going to make my O-. minus.
Okay, so let's try and think this out. What happens next? Dylan? Okay, if the O minus always tries to come down, but something's got to leave. Is there anything there that can leave? Yes, the chloride can leave. So if I lose my Cl minus, I've now made my ketone. That was one equivalent of R minus. So now what's the second equivalent of R minus going to do? Attack the carbonyl again. So if it attacks the carbonyl again, I'm going to end up with that alkoxide. What does the O minus try and do? Tries to reform the carbonyl, but in this case, nothing can leave. So what's it do? Wait around for acid and water. So it's going to wait around to become protonated with H plus H2O. And so if that's the case, then I will make my tertiary alcohol, where two of the R groups now came from the organolithium compounds. Now, if this was an MGBR, we had done this reaction before. And the Grignard and the organolithium are comparable. What if I wanted to make this into a ketone? Could I just add one equivalent of R minus? I could, but then that first equivalent of R minus would react. Some of it would go into a ketone, and then some of the R minus that hadn't react would attack the ketone. So I would get a mixture of tertiary alcohol, some ketone, and some unreacted carboxylic acid chloride. So what I've done in this case is I've forced the issue all the way by using two Grignards or two organolithiums. But what I would really like to do is I would like to stop at one. So if I'm going to stop at one, I have to remember something that I think I said Monday. And that is we have to remember the difference between an organolithium compound and a lithium cuprate in terms of their reactivities. One is a harsh, hard reactant, and the other one is much milder. Do you remember which is which? Grignard is harder, and the cuprate is milder. Now, what was the context that we looked at that? We looked at that in the context of this. Reacting an alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone with the Grignard and with the lithium cuprate. The Grignard, or the organolithium, attacked the carbonyl carbon. The cuprate added to the beta carbon. And this was called conjugate addition. I think that was Monday. Or maybe it was Friday. But yeah, well, a while could be yesterday, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday of next week. So it's probably last Friday. Or I might not have even done it in this class, and I'm remembering that I did it in the 8 o'clock in the morning class. 
Oh. Last Monday? Wow. I mean, that was almost that was almost a week ago. That's what that's how we talked about this. So I said at the time, I said I'm going to introduce this idea that this is a harder or stronger reagent and the lithium cuprate is the mild and I'm going to invoke that in the future. And this is the future. So we just saw what happened if I took an acid chloride and I reacted with a Grignard. I've got a re or with a Grignard or organolithium. I got to use two equivalents, and I make the tertiary halide, tertiary alcohol. Probably just go back over that. So when I take this acid chloride and I react it with the organolithium compound, I make a tertiary alcohol. If I want to stop at the ketone and just add one R group, now I'm going to use the milder lithium cuprate with the two R groups. And even though it's got two R groups, it's not going to add both of them. which means I only have to add a half a mole of lithium cuprate. But even if I add one mole, only one R is going to add. And so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm now going to end up adding that R group and I'm going to end up making the ketone. <coughs> so I can get away with this milder reagent and make the ketone. <coughs> so I'm I have invoked this once, I'm gonna invoke it again. When you think of the difference between cuprates and organolithiums the cuprates are usually milder, which means they'll really only add one. Now there's another analogy that I can use to th for this. And that is that I could take this acid chloride and add lithium aluminum hydride to it. Now notice I'm kind of sneaking here because I'm progressing from carboxylic acid reactions into carboxylic acid derivative reactions. But it's okay, it's all one big mess. So what would I get in this reaction? Don't know what you'll get. That is a good. That's a good first statement. Because I'm sure you're not alone. So if you don't know what you're going to get, the first step would be. Okay. And then what happens? A lot of deja vu going on. Because these reactions are basically like all the same. It's the same kind of steps over and over and over again. Okay. So there's one H minus. What's the second H minus do? going to attack. Once I'm here, anything else happen? Just hang out, wait for the acid to come in.
So if I react lithium aluminum hydride and an aldehyde, sorry, not an aldehyde, an acid chloride, I will make a primary alcohol. Just like if I reacted lithium aluminum hydride and the carboxylic acid for Monday, or if I reacted the lithium aluminum hydride and the aldehyde, they're all going back to the primary alcohol. I want to stop. I want to stop at just one H. <clears throat> is there a way to do that? And this is a somewhat rhetorical question because the answer is yes. And if I said how, I have to tell you how. So, similarly to organolithium is a strong reagent Cuprate is milder. Lithium aluminum hydride is strong. What I really need to do is I need to make a lithium aluminum hydride with one H. And that's it. Well, that's easy enough to do. L-I-A-L-H. Now I've got to replace those other three H minuses. Eh, let's replace that with three tertiary groups. Yes, it's really big, and so it's really big, which is going to make it less, even less reactive. But now I only have one H minus that I can add. So when that H minus adds to the acid chloride, the O minus is formed, comes back down, kicks off the chlorine. There's no more H's to add. So I can stay at this aldehyde. The only question is, can I make this? Somebody else makes it for me because I can buy it. That's called lithium tritersbutoxy aluminum hydride. So it is a much less reactive hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is most reactive. Sodium is next, but sodium still has four H minuses. This one, just one. So I could stop this reaction then with the aldehyde. Number one, if you can get that, it's still going to have four hydrides. So we really need to just take away all the hydrides from one. And then when I put the three oxygen groups on the aluminum, it kind of stabilizes the aluminum even more than the H minus. So this is our, going to be our go to reagent. There's another one called Dibal, but I'm not going to get into that one. So the lithium tritersbutoxy aluminum hydride is our less reactive hydride. And so it will allow us to stop if you're using a carboxylic acid. Right, so that's the end of whatever that chapter is. So you can see that we're kind of going through these chapters a little bit quicker. But in my remaining five minutes, because you never give away five minutes. Somebody stopped in class years and years and years ago with like 10 minutes left and they just said, okay, go. And they were being observed by a senior member and the senior members like you never stop
there's always review that you can do. If, even if you don't do new stuff, there's always review. So, I mean, they can't fire me, but I still live by that code. So let me set up next week. Which you're also not supposed to do in the five minutes left, but I'll vibrate. Here's my derivatives. Acid chloride. Acid anhydride. Carboxylic acid, I'll just put it in there. Ester. Amid. <coughs> All of those are Y groups. And so, if you remember back when we talked about aldehydes and ketones, when we have aldehydes and ketones and the Y group is an H and an R group, Y can never leave. So if I take a nucleophile and I react it with the carbonyl and I make my intermediate here, my O group can come back down and the only way it does that is if it can kick off the nucleophile or the Y group. Now think, if this is, if this is an aldehyde or a ketone, Y is not going anywhere. And when the nucleophile was an H or an R group, meaning lithium aluminum hydride or a Grignard, it didn't go anywhere. So the molecule was made, waited for acid. We went to aldehydes and ketones, but then we added the nucleophile as alcohol or water. And what happened? The alcohol or the water could leave, so now we had equilibrium. Now I'm going to wait, make the Y group able to leave. And fortunately, when I wrote this table like this, which one of these Y groups is the best leaving group? That's the best leaving group. Why? Because Cl minus is a, it's basically a non-base, it's weak. What's the next weakest base? A carboxylate. Is it stabilized by resonance? How about an OH? Next. OR. Now I'm getting to a little bit stronger base, right? Can it leave? We're going to have to work at it. Normally you have to protonate it to make it leave. Well, that's okay. We can do these reactions with acid. Just like OH. OH doesn't leave on its own, but if you protonate it, it'll leave. How about the N group? That's not going anywhere. So, best leaving group, worst leaving group. Weakest base, strongest base. So there's our derivatives. What can I do with an acid chloride? I can make all of these things out of an acid chloride. React the acid chloride with water. Well, that's the definition of an acid derivative. If you react an acid derivative with H plus H2O, you make carboxylic acid and water. But have we turned an acid chloride into an anhydride in the last two periods, yes. Have we turned it into a carboxylic acid? Well, no, but we can. Have we turned it into an ester? Yes. Have we turned it into an amide? Yes. 
anhydride, what have I done? I've turned the anhydride into the ester and the amide. So with these carboxylic acid derivatives, I just turn them into each other. And the last thing, I now have, now when I add my nucleophile, it's a competition. Who's a better leaving group? The group that was on there originally or the group that I just added? And whichever one's the weakest leaving, or whichever one's the best leaving group, it's gone. So now I can do substitutions, and that's why I can go from top to bottom, but I can't go from the bottom up. So everything can be made into an amide, but I can't make the amide into anything. So that's the overarching principle that we're going to do next week. So that's what we will talk about on Tuesday when we get back. And then exam questions on Wednesday. If you have any questions, you can email them to me. Um, if you need a little get away from family time over Easter, you can forward them to me. I probably will need a little bit of that so I can answer your questions. Otherwise, come and see me next week and we'll have class on Tuesday.